Okay then my friends, so now we have one action in the store complete to add new documents. The next action I want to create is one to fetch all the habit documents from Firestore. And then once we have those fetched, we can update the local pin state with those documents. Now eventually we'll be calling this action from the home page, the index page, when the application first starts so that we can get all of the initial data from the database. Because remember, when the application first starts, the state starts off right here as an empty array. And so we want to grab all of the previously saved habit documents from the database to populate that array with all the different habits that we have, right? So then let's make a new asynchronous action up here at the top underneath this comment to fetch all the habits. And we're going to call this fetch habits. Inside this function, we need to grab the DB instance once again. So we can say const, then in curly braces to destructure, we say dollar sign DB, and we set that equal to use nuxt app, and we invoke it. So we'll use this shortly when we come to fetch the documents from the database. Now, in order to do that, we need to import another function from the Firestore module up at the top of the file called get docs. So make sure you do that first of all. And then back down here in the action, we can say await because this is asynchronous and then get docs and we invoke that function. And this function takes in just one argument this time, which is a reference to the collection from which we want to fetch the documents. So we know how to specify that. We use the collection function again and we pass in two arguments. The first one is the DB instance, which we have. And the second, the collection name, which is habits. So then this get docs function will grab all the documents in the habits collection and return them to us. And it does this in the form of a query snapshot, which contains those documents. So let's store that in a constant called snapshot so that we can access the documents from it. So the next thing we want to do then is update the habits array in this store to be whatever documents we get back. So we can say this dot habits to access that bit of state is equal to snapshot. And then we can access a property on that called docs. Now this docs property is an array of document snapshots and not an array of objects which represent those habits. So therefore we need to map this array of document snapshots into a new array of actual habit objects, right? Let's use the map method on the docs to do this then. And we fire a function inside here for each document snapshot so we can return a new habit object for each one of those. Now in this function, we automatically get access to the document snapshot for each iteration as an argument. All right, so we're gonna call that doc. And as a return value inside parentheses, we'll make an object to represent a habit. Inside the object, we wanna output all the document data properties. And we can access those by saying doc and then dot data, which is a function, and we invoke that function. Now this returns an object with all the document properties on it, the name, the completions, and the streak. And since this returns an object, we need to use the spread syntax to spread those object properties into this new object we're returning. So place dot 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 in front of it. Now the return value of this data method does not include the ID of the document, just the properties of the document. So we have to also add on the ID property separately. And we set that equal to doc.id directly from the document snapshot. We get access to that ID. Okay then, so now we're mapping this array of document snapshots into an array of habit objects, which contain all the correct properties, including the ID as well. And then we're updating the habits on the store state to be that array of habit objects. Cool. So. Now we need to call this action from the home page so that when the home page loads in the browser, we trigger this fetch request and update the store state. All right then, so instead of logging this to the console right here, instead we'll take the habit store and we can access any actions on the habit store directly by saying habit store dot and then the action name, which in our case is gonna be fetch habits like so. So when the index page loads, it's gonna run this function automatically for us. All right then, so I'm gonna save that. And in fact, what we're gonna do now is we're going to get the habits from the store 
and we're going to pass them as a prop into the habit list. Now we have the habit store available to us and therefore available to the template as well. So I could pass in a prop and I'm data binding here by saying habits, that's the name of the prop, is equal to the habit store dot habits to get the habits part of the habit store state. So we're going to fetch the data that in turn updates this and those habits are getting passed through as a prop now. Now over in the habit list, we need to accept those props and we can do that just by using this function right here called define props. So we say props is equal to define props, passing an object and we specify that habits is an array. It's going to be an array of habits, right? So now instead of just hard coding this one list item right here, we could use V4 on this right here. So let me bring this down to the next line so we have a bit more room. So we could say right here, V4 is equal to habits in habits. Remember, habits is the prop we have, which is an array. And we're saying for each habit in habits, we're outputting now an li tag. Now we also need a key. So let's data bind the key value right here. And that's just going to be the habit ID, which is unique. So habit.id. All right, so we can access now each habit inside this li tag. And we could output the habit name right here. So instead of this, we could use curly braces to output a value, which is habit.name. If this is all going over your head, definitely check out either my Nuxt beginners course or my view beginners course where I go over all of this kind of stuff in detail. I am expecting you understand what these things are. So we output the habit name and then also down here we can output the streak so we can say current streak and instead of outputting this zero we could say curly braces habit dot streak like so and I think for now that is pretty much it. We don't need to do anything with the completions right. So I'm going to save that now and now we can view this in a browser. Okay, so now when we view this in a browser, we can see all of those habits listed on the page. Awesome. And this happened because we invoked the fetch habits action on the index page, which in turn fetched all those habit documents and updated the store state. And whenever the store state changes, that state change propagates to any component which consumes it and triggers a re-render with that state, which is why we see them all here on the page. Also, if I was to add another habit, like, I don't know, workout every day, and then submit it, then we'll see that new habit on the page as well. And that's not because we're refetching the data from Firebase, but because when we add a new habit, the add habit action in the Pinya store also adds that habit to the local store state. And again, when that state changes, it propagates the change to whatever components consume the state and triggers a re-render so we can see it, okay? Right then, so now we're adding habits and we're also fetching them. Next up, let's try deleting them. 